Hi, the Mud Broker here. I have never been a fan of meatloaf. I could never find a recipe that I really liked. I always had friends who say, well, you gotta try my meatloaf, it's fantastic. Without fail, they would pull this thing out of the oven, look like a pan full of afterbirth. Drowning in ketchup, overflowing with grease, bone dry, the only moisture in it was the occasional gob of soggy bread or some of that god-awful onion soup mix. So I never really made meatloaf very often, no. I didn't make it at all. Until about six months ago, when my bride of these many years declared, tonight you shall make a meatloaf for supper. Well, I told her, gee honey, I don't know how to make meatloaf, I've never really tried. She said, you'll figure something out. Well, I did. The first try was so-so, but at least enough to show that I was on to something. And having perfected the recipe, I will share it with you. Of course, the most important ingredient in any recipe is alcohol. Tonight, I will be drinking ginger brandy. If you ever have a cold, make yourself a nice hot toddy with hot water, honey, lemon, a couple of shots of ginger brandy. It'll cure what ails you, or at least you won't care that you're still sick. God damn, you gotta love whoever invented that stuff. Anyway, let's begin. I have three pounds of ground beef. I don't remember if it's 80 or 85 percent lean, but it doesn't really matter. Three pounds of ground beef. To that you want to add three cups, now that's three cups before you crushed them, of crushed corn flakes. The easiest way to crush them is put them in a big Ziploc bag and smash them up with a rolling pin. You want them fairly fine, but you don't have to reduce them to flour, so just a good fine grinding of them will do. You got your corn flakes, you want two eggs. One egg, two eggs, quarter cup of Worcestershire sauce, Lee and Perrins, that out of the way. About two tablespoons worth of yellow mustard. You can use Dijon mustard if you want, I suppose, but I got yellow, so that's what I'm using. Two tablespoons of hot sauce. Crystal hot sauce, finest known. Yeah, there's one, there's about two. I'll give it a little more. Do -do, set that aside. And you want some spices. This is a teaspoon each of salt, pepper, smoked paprika, you can use regular paprika too, and cinnamon. Yes, cinnamon. Sprinkle that around. And now get in there with your hands and mix this up good. A lot of the gourmet types on YouTube will tell you that you want to handle the meat as little as possible. You don't want to squish it and squeeze it and knead it too much. Otherwise, it'll make it into a heavy, dense meatloaf. Well, so what? Ask yourself, when was the last time you went to your favorite restaurant, sat down and had a nice, big, airy, fluffy steak? Meat is supposed to be heavy and dense. You'll also notice there's no chopped onions, no chopped green peppers, because I don't like onions and green peppers. And most people put so damn much of that stuff in there, by the time they're done, if you were trying to sell this in a store, you couldn't legally call it meatloaf. You'd have to call it something like loaf style beef flavored meat product or something. Anyway, get everything good and thoroughly mixed. My pan over here. Once you got it thoroughly mixed, shape it a little bit into a more or less loaf shaped roll and throw it in your pan. Arrange it just a 
a little bit. Pat her down in there good. And where'd it go? I gotta wipe my hands off. Wipe the meat off my hands. You want to give this a nice generous sprinkling. coarse salt. Yeah, you can fight me and you can open it. Jesus. There. Give it a nice generous sprinkling of coarse salt. Kosher salt or sea salt, either one will work. Do, do, do. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. And some nice black pepper. And that's it. No, I'm not going to cover this with bacon. I'm not going to soak it in ketchup or anything else like that. This is meatloaf, not ketchup loaf. And that's it. You want to put that into a 350 degree oven for a while. The time isn't really as important as the temperature. You want to cook this to an internal temperature of 150 degrees Fahrenheit. Start getting more than that, it'll start drying out. Usually it takes about an hour and 45 minutes, but it'll vary depending on your oven. I'll be back in about 45 minutes and show you one more important step. All right, my meatloaf has been in the oven for about an hour, and the internal temperature is nowhere near done yet, but we're up to uh, about 115. Still got a ways to go. We're looking for 150. Anyway, after about an hour or so, you want to take your meatloaf out and very carefully pour off the excess fat. Now you can do this dipping it out with a spoon if you're not feeling really steady. But I like to live dangerously and I pour it right out. If you pour it out, try real hard not to dump the meatloaf out of the pan. But this goes back in the oven probably another 45 minutes, minutes or so, and I'll be right back. All right, this has been resting for 15 minutes. It's done. It's 155 internal temperature. You might notice there's a big cut across the end. I tried to film this one-handed and it just didn't quite work. So. I'll cut me off a nice big piece off of the end, and I'll show you what we got. Get a little closer there. It's nice and juicy. This will hold moisture real good in the refrigerator. It doesn't dry out, and it's just fantastic tasting. Hmm. So, if you hate meatloaf, give this a try. I think you might actually like it. I know I did.